Next, I want to define these terms that you might hear in an economics class or in a business class. They are the terms average cost, average revenue, and average profit. So what is the average cost? The average cost is basically the cost divided by the number of items you're making. So X represents, in this case, the number of items that you're making or selling or whatever. And so if you divide the cost of making those X items by how many items you made, you get on average how much it costs you to make each individual item. Similarly, the revenue is basically the income from selling X items. The average revenue is, again, the revenue of selling all the items divided by how many items you made. Finally, profit is the money that you get to keep. And again, the average profit is the profit that you made from selling X items divided by the X itself. So in example three, we're going to use these terms to do something useful. It says you own and operate a flower shop, and one day you find that the cost in dollars of growing X hundred roses is given by the formula. If the revenue from the sale of X hundred of roses is given by the R of X formula, find each of the following. So we have two formulas, one for the cost, one for the revenue, and X in this problem represents the number of roses, but it's in hundreds. So when I say X is equal to one, you should understand that we're making 100 roses. If I say X is two, you should make, you know, understand that it's now selling 200 roses or whatever. So in part one of the problem, they want the average cost, average revenue, and average profit when X roses are being grown and sold. So we don't know what X is in this case, so we're gonna have an answer that depends on the letter X. Now, in this problem, we do not have the profit yet. And the question says we want the average profit later on. So let's begin by calculating the profit. This is not part of the question, but I need it to in order to find the average profit later on. Now, keep in mind that profit is the revenue minus the cost. It's basically the amount of money that's come into your business, which is 120 plus 90 square root of X. Take away from that the costs to operate your business, which is 200 plus 100 fourth root of X. And so in this particular instance, we end up with 120 plus 90 square root of X minus 200 minus 100 fourth root of X. Combining some like terms, we have 100 minus 200, that's gonna be negative 80. So I'm gonna write 90 square root of X minus 80 minus 100 fourth root of X. And ideally, I would like to rewrite these as exponents so that it's easy to work with them later on if I have to differentiate them or something like that. So instead of having square root of x, I can write x to the 1 half. And instead of having the fourth root of x, I can write x to the power of 1 fourth. And again, I'm using the same usual formula, which says if you have a radical with a to the power of m with an n on the outside, the rule is this is going to be a to the m divided by n. This is what we call the rational you know, exponent rule. So again, this is not required, but I need this in order to be able to tell what the average cost, average revenue, and average profit later on is. So let's start with the average cost. So keep in mind, the average cost is the cost equation divided by the letter x. And in this particular problem, the cost equation is 200 plus 100 and then fourth root of x all divided by x. So that's pretty much the end. You can worry about cleaning it up or breaking it down or whatever. So if you want to break it down a little bit more, you can write 200 over x plus 100 x to the power of 1 fourth divided by x just like that. And all I did here is separate the fraction to two pieces. And if I wanted to, I can keep going and write down the following. Average cost, by the way, the symbol for that is C bar of X. So that's the average cost. If I wanted to, I can rewrite my formula for average cost as 200 X to the power of negative one plus 100 X to the power of negative three quarters. Where did the negative three quarters come from? It came from the fact that I have X to the power of one fourth on the numerator and X to the power of one on the denominator. And according to the exponent rules, we're supposed to subtract the top numerator power minus the bottom denominator power. So you end up with negative three quarters. And that's where you're getting the negative three quarters from. So like I said, this last bit is not really 
need it. It's not really required, but I did it anyway, just, just because to show you how to simplify the expression. So that was the average cost. And now let's take a look at the average profit or let's do revenue first, the average revenue. So again, the average revenue is the revenue equation divided by X. And in this particular problem, the average revenue is going to be 120 plus 90 and then square root of X all divided by X itself. Again, you can break it down and have 120 divided by X plus 90 X to the one half divided by X if you wanted to. And even that can be reduced even more. By the way, average revenue, the symbol for that is actually capital R X and then a bar on top of it that represents the average revenue. So in this particular problem, it's 120 X to the negative one plus 90 X to the power of negative half. Again, that's because X to the one half divided by X to the one is X to the one half minus one, which is X to the negative one half. So again, these things are pretty much excellent rules from your elementary algebra classes that we're using to rewrite expressions in this class. So we now have the average cost and we have the average revenue. And so what's left is the average profit. And again, the average profit is the profit equation divided by X. Keep in mind that the profit equation was this one that we got earlier. We had to work for it. It wasn't given to us. So we can use it to find the average profit. By the way, the average profit is also known as, you know, capital P with the bar on top of it. If you want to use that notation, you can. So in any case, this is 90 X to the one half minus 80 minus 100 X to the power of one fourth, all divided by X. So if I break it down and simplify the expression, I end up with 90 X to the negative one half minus 80 X to the negative one half, oh, sorry, negative one minus 100 X to the power of negative three quarters. Okay, how did I get this answer so quickly? All I had to do really mentally is subtract these two from each other. So do R bar of X minus C bar of X and I get the answer right away. That works all the time, by the way. So that's the end of part one of the problem where they said they wanted the average cost, average revenue and average profit. So at this point, they want in part two, the rate at which the average profit is changing when 300 roses are being grown. So we need to break that down into multiple little sections. First of all, the word rate means derivative. So they want the derivative, the derivative of what? The derivative of the average profit. So I'm gonna take that last box that we just got, find its derivative. And then not only that, they want me to plug in 300 roses into the answer that I get. So again, we have to get the derivative first, then plug in the 300. And keep in mind, we're doing the derivative of the average profit in this case. So let's take a look at that. So the average profit equation is the one that we just got. It's capital P of X bar, which is 90 X to the negative one half minus 80 X to the negative one minus 100 X to the negative three quarters. They want the rate of this. So in other terms, they want the derivative of all this. Well, thankfully for this problem, we don't need to use a quotient rule or a product rule. We could just use the rules that we learned in the last section to actually do the problem. So in other terms, we're going to use the constant multiple rule for the first one. It says there's 90 and then we want the derivative of X to the power of negative half, which is negative half X to the power of negative three halves. Then we have the negative 80 X to the power of negative one, half, uh, sorry, negative one. The derivative of that is going to be again, the power rule. So that one gives me negative one, x to the power of negative two. And then finally, the derivative of 100 x to the power of negative three quarters. Again, 100 is a constant, so it just kind of waits. And we differentiate the x to the power of negative three quarters, negative three fourth, x to the negative seven fourth. Remember, we slide the power down, then we take away one from the exponent. 
And at this point in time, we need to clean everything up and see what we get. So 90 times negative 1 half is going to be negative 45. Negative 80 times negative 1 is going to be positive 80 next to the power of negative 2. And finally, negative negative is going to be positive, and that's going to be 300 divided by 4, which is, I believe, 75 x to the negative 7 quarters. So now, keep in mind that the question was, once you find the average rate, figure out how fast the average rate of profit is changing when 300 roses are being grown. Now keep in mind x is in hundreds of roses, right? Remember x was earlier given to us and x is the number in hundreds. So if I want the number of 300 roses, what should x be? x should be just simply 3. So I'm going to plug in a 3 into this expression and see what I get. So for 300 roses, plug x equal to 3. So p x bar becomes equal to negative 45 times 3 x to the negative 3 half plus 80 times 3 to the power of negative 2. And then finally, 75 times 3 to the power of negative 7 fourth. And again, we can just punch this into the calculator, and the calculator will give us the answer, and we'll be done. So when I put this in a calculator, I end up with a massive decimal, but this is money that we're talking about. So I'm just going to put 11.19 and then there's a five afterwards. So I'm just going to put 11.20. And so for my purposes in my class, that's good enough. And you know, if you were in an economics class or in a business class, you'd have to interpret this and say what the number means and what's the unit. Is it in dollars? Is it dollars per item? And so on and so forth. But like I said, in my case, I don't need any of that stuff. I just need you to be able to find the derivative and then plug in a simple number. And we don't really care so much about the units. I'm not going to worry about it and I'm not going to make your life miserable about it.